Hello, this is Mark Wilkshire, and thanks for choosing to listen to the Explore Finland radio show in partnership with Glenn Murray, the Nordic tourist. For this episode, I'm really happy to be rejoined by craterologist Dermu Earthman, uh, or to give him his full title, I'll take a breath here, Earth and Planetary Scientist and Lecturer at the Arctic Planetary Science Institute. So, Dermu, thanks for making some time to join us again. Hi. Hi, I'm happy to be here again. So back in episode 36, Temu took us on a tour of Lapajarvi, Europe's largest crater lake. Um, for these episodes that I'm make, making now with Glenn, I asked Temu to talk again about one of the places that he mentioned before, and this is the area known as Puhavori. Um, Glenn and I are then going to go, maybe in summer when it's a little, oh, I'll do that again. Glenn and I are then going to go and visit and make a video for the Nordic Tourists YouTube channel. So, Temu, please, maybe for those that haven't heard the previous episode, explain a little bit what's, well, where is Puhavori, first of all? Uh, it's in Alajärvi, but basically it's uh, by the lake Lappajärvi. So uh, we're talking about the, the southern end of Lake Lappajärvi. Yeah, southeastern end, I would say. Okay, and what is what is special about Puhavori? Why did it catch my attention when you mentioned it to me last time? Well, it's just a fabulous place. I mean, it's um, the rim, the preserved rim of Lappajärvi crater. Basically, the rim is preserved almost all around the crater, but uh, the rim is at its at its highest in. Pyhävuori and Lakeaharju. And, and what is special about the fact that you can see the rim there? Uh, because in most cases in old impact craters, the rim is completely eroded. So hundreds of millions of years of erosion have completely destroyed the rim. So in Finland, basically all you see is a roundish lake, no trace of a rim. But in Lappajärvi, you have much of the rim still nicely preserved, and it provides you with magnificent views over the lake. And what about this name, Puhavori? What does it mean? Holy mountain. The holy yeah. mountain, right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now mountain, and we discussed this last time, that, you know, Etelapokyama is known for being quite flat. Uh, when I told uh, my wife, Satu, that we, we were talking about Puhavori, she sort of, She's from the east, and she rolled her eyes and said, "Ah, oh, Ma and its mountains. Everything slightly tall is a mountain." Uh, but can you describe the the area, sort of geologically or geographically, for the uh, for the listener? Uh, yeah, sure. It's um, Puhavuori itself rises something like eighty meters from the Lappajärvi lake surface, so it is locally a prominent place. It's not quite as high as uh, Lakeaharju. Lakeaharju is about 100 meters, but they are still high places, so quite unusual in the area. And it's just beautiful rock outcrops for the, much of the rim in the uh, southeastern part. And uh, gorgeous views. Yeah, 80 meters high uh, over the, the lake. Lapiarvi sort of spreading out several kilometers uh, two, away, kilometers, away. two kilometers from the lake shore and uh, basically it's actually quite steep because the uh, lake shore area is very flat for, for the first I don't know kilometer or so so it is pretty steep uh, so that that's something I was going to ask you how does one access, access this area um, I guess first of all if you're if you're going on two healthy feet how do you how do you get there uh well if you want to do it the easy way you just take your car and take the road between uh Alayarvi and Bimpeli and then you uh turn well <laughs> left if you go to Bimpeli and drive a less than a kilometer and you end up in a nice little parking lot and then you just walk 200 meters and there you are it's so that you drive literally to the top? Almost, yes. Okay, okay. So 
that's the easy way um is the easy way also accessible for people who are less able-bodied or in wheelchair or anything like that uh no not with the wheelchair so basically you need to have two healthy feet yeah but uh, it's not it's not a long walk it's not that difficult if you stay on the uh, well the main part of the place it is difficult terrain if you go wandering out to wherever there so that can be tough but um, if you just stay in the scenic places and where the most uh, historically and archaeologically interesting places are then no problem and and you said before that it's um that there's an easy way and a difficult way so i'm guessing the difficult way is from walking from sort of the lake and up up <laughs> there that, that would be one option yes uh but one recommendable option would be uh, take a something like seven kilometer hike from uh, Lakea Harju along the crater rim to Pyhavuori. Ah, so so nearby there there is a, I don't know if you call it Luontopolku or Kunturata, uh, kind of a, a nature trail or a or a sort of exercise track. Uh, t- t- describe that a little bit for me. This this trail that's up there. Um, there are a couple of lean tos along the route it's um seven kilometers i think uh, from uh, the um, slalom slope at uh, lakea harju and uh, it goes up and down along the rim in a few places you get gorgeous views and uh, yeah you can have a cup of coffee or tea at the lean tos and uh, yeah then you climb up to Pyhavuori at the end so it's a nice yeah, little walk. This, this idea of the, you, you you call it a lean to, and in Finnish it's lavu, uh, yep. and it's one of the one of the things that I always take visitors to go and do because I think it's a very a very Finnish way to to sort of take a rest when you're when you're exercising. There is it is it um, is it sort of uh, quite a wide track, or is it one of these sort of winding nature nature trails? Uh, pretty narrow winding nature trail okay so not, not really a well-maintained hiking thingy but just a small pathway yeah okay okay uh, i think we'll definitely go and uh, and check it out i'm not sure if we will walk the full seven kilometers but we'll we'll go up there and take a take a look for sure um and if we've if we've made our way to puhavori by foot or by car um what can we expect to see in that in that area a uh, very interesting geology to start with okay i mean as i said the whole place is part of the preserved rim and you have one of the best views across the crater but then you have other stuff as well and uh, i think the one that really catches people's attention is the uh Uhrikivi, the uh, sacrificial stone there oh yes okay so explain this in a little in a little detail who was who was being sacrificed up there and by who <laughs> little children <laughs> children oh. of the uh, lappi or sami people and they were sacrificed by the uh, uh, pirka tribes and they were of course having a war against each other or something like that and uh, wanted I, to sacrifice the sami children i thought you were joking is, are you is that is that legend or is that actually kind of historical fact uh, that's a legend okay well, thank goodness for that it got very <laughs> dark there for a moment yeah but it's a very interesting legend um explain this um this stone to people paint paint some pictures with words um it looks like a weird mushroom okay um it's about maybe five meters high, maybe six, seven meters wide. And the top of the stone or the cap of the mushroom, that's made of uh, granite pegmatite. That's a typi- one of the typical uh, rocks in the area. And uh, that's much harder than the uh, lower part, the stalk of the mushroom. That's made of a rock called mica nice so that's softer i think we'll get these words and put them into the the podcast description and the show notes so that people can can see how they're how they're written yeah Um, that would make sense okay so there's these two different types of rocks that are are together here yes 
And uh, those are ancient rocks. Those are almost two billion years old. Uh, but the interesting things happened only about 9,000 years ago or something like that, because uh, that was after the ice age, the last glaciation and the sea level, or actually it was a lake at that time. Uh, the Baltic Sea was not a sea, but a lake. And the lake shore was at Pyhävuori. Okay. So okay. the wave action and uh, ice and wind, all that stuff eroded the softer lower part of the mushroom, the mycon ice. Uh, so it could have been two similarly sized rocks, but that that wave erosion over the years has sort of only affected the the softer lower part of the of the rock. Yeah, and it's it's actually an outcrop. It's a part of the bedrock there. So and it's a continuous piece of rock so there's a contact between the two rock types there yeah explain how those two different types of rocks have come to be kind of attached or connected to each other uh the myconice is the older of the two so that's basically old sediments that have been eroded from the ancient finnish continent and then they've been um, uh, squeezed into a hard rock during a mountain building process and during that process uh, molten rock was intruded ah. into those compressed sediments and that molten rock is now the uh, uh, granite pegmatite okay interesting i, I want to go back a, 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 a minute or so where you said that the the baltic sea used to be a lake so now we think of the baltic sea being um uh, uh, running along the, the sort of south of the south of southern coast of Finland um, and then between Finland and and Sweden to the to the west of Finland is the the Bay of Botnia um, just just describe for me how how the, the Baltic Sea used to be a lake um, well the uh, glacier uh, made a dent in the uh, bedrock so the bedrock was way lower back in the day when the glacier started to melt and when it started to melt the water of course filled in that dent in the bedrock so basically the water level was what 150 meters no yeah maybe something like 150 meters higher than it is today and uh, since then, the bedrock has been slowly rising and still does less than a centimeter per year around Vasa. Yeah. So, and so was the, was the Balt what we now call the Baltic Sea, did it, did it, was it sort of surrounded some, somehow to make it an enclosed lake? Is that what you, is that what you mean? Uh, yes. And there were a couple of different lake faces during the evolution of the Baltic Sea. So first it was a lake, then it was a sea because there was an opening to the Atlantic in the west. And then it became a lake again, and then it became a sea. And that last phase of sea then evolved into the modern day Baltic Sea. In interesting. So, that, and that's just by the, by the kind of rising and, and rising of the lands or the, or the dropping of the lands or the melting of the ice, changing the, the form of that, that water. Yes. Huh. Interesting. Okay. It's always there's always something new to learn. Um, what else is there up at Puhavori that Glenn and I should go and uh, should go and visit? Plenty. Okay. Um, for example, there's the um, Pirumpesa cave, uh, Devil's Nest. Uh, as you know, in Finland, we don't usually have extensive caves or anything like that. But uh, in Finnish terms, the caves in Pyhävuori, uh, uh, Rumpesa is the largest, but there are smaller ones as well. They are pretty nice. They are also formed basically in the same manner as the uh, Uhrikivi. So erosion has been uh, active in the fractures of the rock and sometimes in the contacts between the mica schist and the uh, granite pegmatite. 
So yeah, those so are it's basically the same, fractured it's the same caves. rock and the same and the same process, but this is quite carved out caves. Yes. So the Pirumpesa is something like 60 meters in length. Some say I can't really see it being that long, but who am I to argue with? <laughs> <laughs> with local with local folklore anyway. Yeah, but it's it's a nice cave anyway. And um, uh, funny thing is that it used to be a sauna. Okay. Naturally, I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. Yeah, we are. <laughs> if, there's, if, if there's a if there's a space that that can kind of be closed off, then there's every chance someone will try and turn it into a sauna. Yeah. Um, it, when, it, when when was it used as a sauna? Uh, sometime in the twenties. Okay. Because there was a hermit called Jaakko Reipakka. Uh, who lived there, and uh, the remains of his cabin are also still visible there. So it, it was a stone hut, basically, there. Okay, so he built a stone hut near the caves and then used the used one of the caves as his sauna. Yes. Okay. We would need to go and find need to go and find that while we're while we're up there. Um, yeah. And can you go into the caves? Because we found we found while we've been researching places to visit. Uh, other locations with caves, but they they tend to be sort of restricted access. Can you go into the caves at Puhavor? Uh You can. You basically have to crawl in there, but um, they are accessible. Oh, do you know what? I think I'm going to let Glenn crawl in there. He's the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold his bag for him and stay outside to keep watch. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> uh, okay, and. We mentioned the before. You mentioned the the hiking trail. Um, if we if we go there and we we visit the the stone and we see the caves, anything else nearby that we should we should make sure we we check. Um, actually, there are some uh, rock paintings. Uh, one of them is actually on the back side of Uhrikivi, if I remember correctly. Okay, and. Uh, one of them is uh, actually on the back wall of Jaakko Reipokka's stone hut. And um, it's not entirely certain that they are genuine, but they look convincing and they look old. And um, the interesting bit is, well, okay, old, thousands of years old rock paintings are always interesting, but uh, in, in Finland, they are mostly known from central or eastern Finland, not okay. in western Finland. So if they are the real deal, then that would expand the known area of Finnish rock paintings quite a bit. Is there, is there no way for these to be tested so that it could be proven either way? Or is it, don't, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story? <laughs> uh, if archaeologists had the time and the money and so forth, they could try to date these things and see if they actually are thousands of years old. Um, they, they certainly are not very recent because there is a, a bit of a yeah stuff called silica forming on top of these paintings, so they could be real. Yeah, and, and the lo location kind of makes sense because the rock paintings in Finland are uh, usually on some sort of cliffs by water, and nowadays some are very high up. In the cliffs because the water level was higher so in that sense this is a logical place but, okay um, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to get some some pictures and uh and some video to include in the in the show notes and also of course in glenn's in glenn's video that he'll make yeah um, they are pretty faint but they are there so we need good we need some we need some lights I feel like we're going to have to go out dressed as miners just to get into these caves and uh, <laughs> and see and see what we need to see. But it's good. It's good to know. Um, and we've been hearing some some or hearing and reading about um, a geo park in the area of Lapiavi. Can you can you tell a little bit about about that? I think it's further afield than where we're going directly. But but um, what what is this geo park that we're hearing now? Uh, there's an ongoing project. Um, the heart of it is uh, the Lappjärvi crater, but it extends from Evijärvi all the way down to Ähtäri. Okay. And uh, 
it's it's a very large area, but the the main thing about it is the crater. Uh, and as I said, this is a project at the moment they are working on to get uh, UNESCO global geopark status. So that's something that's very hard to get. And at the moment in Finland, we have two UNESCO geoparks. But uh, yeah, it's a place for people to learn something about geology, enjoy the scenery. So at the heart of it is appreciation of scenery, landscape and the geology, which forms the basis of all this. And you, when we spoke a few years ago, you were working on this geo trail around Lappiari, but it seems like that whole thing has sort of been stretched out now and it goes quite a way north to Eriyarvi and quite a way south. It's almost the length of Etelapokiamai, if I, if I remember. Al right. Almost, yeah. So it's it's very large area at the moment. And it's it's kind of highlighting these geological, geographical kind of points of interest. Precisely, but it's it's not only geology and geography, it's also the living nature, history, all sorts of inter interesting things there. Okay, okay, interesting. Oh, I'll find a website for that and put a link into the show notes again. Yeah. And I think, Demu, we may well have covered Puhabori this time. Um, if If people are interested to hear a bit more about the the, the geo trail that you you made before then uh, episode 36 the tour of lake lapiarvi with with demo um, or also episode 49 all about ice carousels with yanne capuletto uh, the world record attempt was broken on a frozen lake lapiarvi just this year in march 2021 so demo thanks so much for joining us again today well, thanks for having me again this was a pleasure you were worried that your throat was going to be uh, a bit difficult but it held up just fine i think well done <laughs> um i'm looking forward to getting out and uh, and filming at buhavori so uh listener watch what, what look in the show notes and i'm going to do that again Temu, the whole thing so i think that just about wraps up today's show i'd like to say Thank you to Temu for coming back to us today. Thanks, Temu. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Glenn and I are looking forward to getting out and filming at Buhavori. And if you check the show notes, you'll find links to the video and photos from our day out there. Uh, listener, if you want to learn more about Lake Lapiarvi, then you'll find episode 36 with Temu uh, doing the tour of Lake Lapiarvi, uh, or episode 49, which was all about ice carousels with Yanne Capuletto. And the world record for the largest ice carousel was broken on a frozen Lake Lapiarvi in March 2021. So we've got a bit of a bit, bit more content about the same, the same area. If you want to connect with me, I'm most active on Facebook at Explore Finland Radio Show and also on Instagram at Mark Wiltshire or on my website, explorefinlandpodcast.com. If you enjoy the show and want to show your support, then just take a minute and share this episode. You could spread the word to your friends on whichever social network you prefer. Let them know about the show and invite them to Explore Finland with us. And also if there's a subject you want me to cover in a future episode, you can contact me via the website or social media. Always happy to hear from listeners with their with their ideas. So until the next episode, goodbye. And to you, Tema, goodbye. Goodbye.